Hello everyone, FunshineX here with another computer craft tutorial. I hope you guys are excited. I've been waiting anxiously for another tutorial to come out. Uh, this one is a little bit different. I've covered all of the regular computer craft APIs. Um, so with the knowledge of, of uh, Lua, you can uh, build pretty much anything you can in computer craft. Um, so I wanted to cover something a little bit different and this is one of the peripherals. I'm going to be covering a couple of the peripherals that are available. And the first one I'm going to go cover is called the Computercraft Sensor mod. And these are really cool sensors. They work with just about all the other mods that I use. And they allow you to get uh, information about um, the various blocks from the other mods. Uh, so they're really cool. Uh, so first I'm going to go over how you craft them, and then I'll go over how they work. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is a couple of these sensors. I'm going to hide this guy just so he's not in the way. There we go. Uh, so we've got the uh, basic redstone chip and the basic iron chip, which is just a couple of those redstone chips with iron. Pretty easy. Uh, and then you get the blank transmitter card, and these are how the sensors transmit back to the computer their data. Uh, so it's pretty easy to build. You get four of those for that recipe. And then if you take that and some uh, the chips, you can make the sensor controller. And this is the actual peripheral that attaches to your computer and allows you to call out to the sensors with code to get information back. And the last thing you need is uh, the actual sensor themselves. And these are the little uh, sensors you attach to a block or near a block and to probe the data. Okay, so everything's pretty easy to build, um, which I like. So let's go over next what you do with it. The first thing you want to do is build one of those uh, controller um, things. And I'm going to go ahead and break this one off so I can show you how it works. Oops, I thought I was in creative here. Okay, let me get one of those controllers. Okay. So we'll just put it on any side connected to our computer. Looks good right there. Okay, and now our computer should be able to connect to it to peripherals, same way we connected to a monitor or a uh, or a modem like before. Uh, so that will be able to connect. And you can see right now it's got um, a little really cool UI. Uh, it's got some health information, uh, some information about the controller itself. Uh, you see that it's got no channel right now, no sensors connected, but I own it. And if you look at the center, it says no connected. First thing we need to do is assign a new frequency. And the best way to do that is just click this new button. And on single player, you're just going to get the next available uh, frequency. I believe on multiplayer, it'll go out and get um, an available frequency that nobody else is using. I'm not quite sure. I don't have a server to test on. Um, but I'm just going to click new. And it's going to give me channel 2. Channel 2. I've already tested with channel 1 before. Okay, and so it says, okay, I'm, I'm receiving on channel 2, but there's no sensors broadcasting channel 2 yet. So that's fine. Um, so now we need a way to tell our sensors how to transmit back on this frequency. And to do that, you get some of those blank cards. So I'm going to go and grab these out of here. And you can see that he's pink magenta. Um, I can just go ahead and click on there with one of these blank cards and it'll all be colored with magenta and that just uh, re represents um, you can see it's stolen there frequency 2 I think frequency 1 is red and it just goes on there's 10 sensor frequencies allowed by default uh, you can up that via config file so you can see this sensor already has a red transmitter card I'm going to switch him to magenta there, or purple, whatever. And uh, now you can see he's got the little purple color down there. Come back here and we can see that we've got one connected sensor and it's called the world sensor. So we could have other, um, uh, con uh, whatever these things are called, controllers on other computers. You could even have two on the same computer if you wanted to. Um, but basically, uh, whichever frequency they're set to receive on, you need to match 
on the sensor itself and you just do that with these frequency uh, transmitters. Okay, so how do the sensors themselves work? Uh, they're really easy, you just plop them down anywhere you want and uh, I'm not sure the max range they can go from here to here. I think it's in a config file and it's about between 30 and 50 blocks by default. Um, and also configurable is how far, how, what range they are affected. Uh, the default is two, so you start here at zero, so they go one, two, and it's in a square. So this guy can see any block in a two by two square around him. Actually, it's a two by two cube. And so if we click on him, um, let's go actually get a blank one first. Where are they? Here they are. Click on one of these guys and stick him down. You can see he's got like this weird rainbow thing on top. And it says no card in slot. So first we need to put the transmitter card. So we want him on the purple network frequency. And we need a card to put in here. And to get those sensor cards, um, you need to make the blank sensor card, which is just paper around a computer redstone chip. And then you color it based on the mod that you want or want to run the sensor on. So you can see we've got a sensor for things about the world. Uh, inventory, so you can check chests, what's inside chests, and how big they are, that kind of thing. And then you've got a bunch of the mods, build craft, industrial craft, forestry, red power, equivalent exchange, advanced power systems, thom craft, and rail craft. So that's just about all the mods that most of the YouTubers use that are doing uh, tech mods. And then the last one is proximity. So to, you know, they're pretty easy to get, you just take your blank sensor and then craft it with various items. You can see it's wood, it's kind of like a chest. This is similar to like a piston from uh, Buildcraft, or I mean an engine. Um, so, yeah, so they're kind of each kind of represent uh, representative of the mod, more or less. Uh, but anyway, it's pretty cool. So you just craft the one that you want to apply it to. So this first one here, I put a red sensor module in, and that's for the world. And once you put that in, it comes up with the list of probes on the left. The uh, so each sensor module will have different probes. Um, they always always have this console help that's displayed, and you can just go up and down. And the first thing we'll do is display the number of targets. And a world probe always just has one target, and that's the world around it. It doesn't apply to any blocks. So I can, uh, if I just hit the help set, go left or right to actually trigger the probe. Um, and this is all just for, you know, to kind of look at the sensor. You wouldn't be actually doing this in your in your world. You would be writing a computer program to, to, to probe these. But anyway, see, so the world probe can check uh, what level sea level's at, how many animals are in the vicinity, how many mobs are in the vicinity, and how many players. Uh, the area probe can check your light level, uh, the, if it's raining and how strong, is it daytime, uh, if it's a thunderstorm, and also the height of the sensor. So we are at Y level 4 right now because we're in a flat world. And the last one is the biome probe, and that one can tell you that we're in the plains biome, it's uh, 0.8 temperature, 0.4 rainfall, uh, no snow, spawn chance and humidity, that kind of stuff. So. So that that's pretty cool. Um, that's what the world sensor can do. Um, so what you could do is see I've got the red in the top means it's a world sensor. Purple on the around the head, the base means it's on the purple frequency, and so that means I can come over here and I see I've got the world sensor available to me. And this is obviously you can name it whatever you want. Right? Cool. You could also make these public or private. Um, it really has no difference on single player, but on multiplayer, if you make it private, nobody else will be able to probe this sensor, only your own controllers by hitting set owner. Only the probes owned by Ron Douglas would be able to be seen by this controller. Okay, and then the last thing you can do is run 
uh, these programs. And uh, Computer Craft comes with a console application by default, and it's just called Console. And you can select the different sensors, you can select the probe that you want to use, which target, and there's only one target, and let's get the reading. And you can see it's going to display the same kind of thing as what we saw on the sensor itself. Um, but this is kind of just a demoing the API. You could write a program that just pulled out and said, is it raining? You know, or we'd need the uh, area probe. Or is it day? You know, and have some kind of effect if it's raining, do something. Okay. So that that's how you would write uh, your API in here to go out, select a sensor probe, a target, you know, all with code, not a menu, obviously. Uh, okay, so uh, one really way just to see this working, let's make it nighttime, and we can see that right now our light level is four, and our mob spawn, where's that one? Is that in the biome? Oh, I guess it doesn't change. Um, turn the light on, and obviously the light level is higher. No big deal. Okay. The next thing to, uh, sensor I wanted to show is the inventory sensor, and that's the pink one there. And this one has three probes. One just shows you the, t the information about the targets. And you see there's two targets here. One's an engine. It's actually going one, two, and so it's seeing this build craft engine. Uh, and the other one is an alchemical chest from equivalent exchange. Um, so if you see these probes work on any block that's within range, but they don't also always give good data. So you kind of need to know, okay, when I place this sensor down, I want to look at the targets around and really only read from valid targets, because I don't really care that my engine has zero slots, right? But I do care that my chest has 104 total slots, and eight of them have been used as 60 total items inside. Cool, right? Um, could use that really easily in my Let's Play world. I'm counting uh, how many uh, reed have been, uh, or sugar cane have been farmed. I could just check the total items count on my chest instead of trying to run the uh, item detector, something like that. So that's a good a valid use of this of this sensor. And then this also got a probe called the content, and this one's really cool because you can actually see what's in the chest. Uh, the first value is the uh, kind of like the pl the index of where where in the chest it is, so in slot zero, slot one, etc. And then the next number is how many, and then you've got the items. So I've got in slot zero, I've got six iron ingots, and then the at value is the damage value. So with with wool, which is top cloth. We're using damage value four. We've got five of those, and if you look in here, we've got the yellow wool, which is 35 going four. Okay, so really cool. You can see how much, how big your inventory is, and and how many slots are used. You can also see what is in your chest. Pretty cool. Okay, the next sensor moving right along is the buildcraft sensor. Uh, you see, I've got a couple buildcraft things. I've got a combustion engine. I've got a pump. I've got some. Uh, tanks. Um, if you don't use these mods, um, this might not apply to you, but I'm just kind of show you and maybe you'll actually get interested in using some of these mods. Um, but my combustion engine, I can tell if it's powered, um, what the heat stages, uh, stage of it is. I can see how much energy it's extracted so far. And uh, when you turn, obviously, you know, when you turn these on and turn them off, you can't turn them on again until they cool down. And you can't really always see how long that is, but if you look at this, you can see that our penalty cooling is 469 ticks. And uh, it's going down. As soon as that hits zero, the engine will turn on again, because the cool cycle will be done. Uh, we can get information about uh, all the different engines, quarries, mining wells, refineries. Some of these don't always have the best information. I, the refinery didn't tell me much. I tried that one. Uh, my pump. Right, let's see which. Where is it? Got to scroll through all the the things here. But the pump, you can see that uh, it's at Y level four, the v base of the tube. So I can actually know how far down my my pump is. That'd be cool. And which direction's aimed at facing four? 
Uh, but what liquid it's pumping. So it's pumping no liquids, but it would might tell you, okay, I'm pumping water or oil or, or something like that, or lava. And see that turn back on. And the tank one is really cool. We can find that target. There we go. So this, this first tank has 3,000 units of 5269. If we don't know what 5269 is, did you know you can NEI, you can just type in item IDs? Pretty cool, huh? Uh, biofuel is 5269. So we've got 3,000 units of biofuel in this tank. Pretty cool. All right, next one is the industrial craft sensor. Uh, you can get information about reactors and uh, their content and also uh, storage, uh, energy storage devices. So you can see I've got one of these. It's a tier two, which is an MFE. Uh, it can store up to 600,000 units of energy and right now it has 600. Outputs at 128 and it's uh, redstone mode is zero, which is corresponds to this thing right here. Right, so it all matches up and good. And then my reactor, I've got one uranium cell in here, one extra uh, reactor chamber, and it's turned off right now. So if we look at our reactor, zero heat, no output, and it's got size corresponds to how many uh, chambers have been added, zero through one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. I don't know, I can't remember how many you could add, six probably. So I have to turn this guy on. We can go look and see our reactor is now outputting 10 EU per tick and uh, the heat is going to slowly build up. Pretty cool. And we can go check our MFE and it's now getting more energy. The other thing, we can check what's in nuclear reactor. It could say in uh, row one, column two, I believe. Yeah, one, two. So zero, one, two, three, and one, two, five. So it's in a zero-based array. Uh, it's got a uranium cell. So you could easily use this sensor to say, okay, as soon as it's, uh, we've got a depleted uranium cells, pull them out, you know, grab them, extract them or whatever with a red power retriever or something like that, and put new ones in and, and uh, completely automate your nuclear reactor, uh, refueling it. Pretty cool there. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off so we don't explode. Although I don't think we'd ever explode. Uh, here's some more forestry items for the uh, forestry sensor. And it's got information about um, peat engines, uh, biofuel engines, and electric engines. My peat engine, let's see, is uh, actually this one here. It's extracted 400 energy. Um, there's not, see a lot of this doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and I think some of it hasn't formatted correctly. So I wasn't really able to find one of the forestry items that has good information. Even the carpenter um, says, okay, I've been running for five ticks total. Four of those I've been uh, packaging items and uh, I will consume the recipe. I don't really need to know that or anything. Um, but that's, you know, different forestry items. Let's go to Red Power. This has got some st cool stuff. Um, for a battery box, we can determine what the charge is and how much energy is in storage, and whether it has a Red Power signal applied to it or not. As you can see uh, that there. Uh, we can check uh, Red Power furnaces. Didn't have a lot of useful information there, but our CPU, uh, it's got 8192 memory. If you can use that, <laughs> more power to you. I don't know, and it's not running. And uh, what else did I put on there? Disk drive. There's no disk. It's not running. And I don't know what the other two would would help to know about. But uh, let's move on. This sensor is for Cloven Exchange. You can get information from your collectors, your dark matter furnaces or red matter furnaces, your uh, relays, and your condensers. Um, condenser right now it says I've got uh, 97 uh, EMC to make um, a coal or that's how much currently EMC is stored and uh, wasn't able to figure out scaled energy what that meant uh, I think it's 57 times some value to get that 
and I'm not sure how wide it scales it like that, rather than just saying 57. Um, it might have to do with how relays and collectors uh, magnify each other. You know, they might be a factor of 0 0.01, so they kind of can't really m multiply this by 0.01. It's easier to scale at first and then multiply it by like 10 or something. So that's my guess. Um, but yeah, you can get information about your relays. Uh, WOFT, if you want to know, is uh, the watch of a long time. So we don't have any watch applied. It's just going at normal speed. Uh, and your collectors, different values there. You can see that my sun status, that's the light level, I guess, is 16, even though I don't have a glowstone applied. Okay, Thomcraft, uh, really cool. I can check my crucible, how much uh, V and taint is in there, how much it can store, how many bellows are affecting it, uh, what the speed is of it, and the conversion value. So I'm getting half of what it half of the value I throw in. So obviously this is just a normal uh, tier one crucible. If I got the thomium crucible would be better. And the Q block or the research uh, block has got some cool things on it. You can see exactly how much your um, bookshelves and brain in the jars affect the the bonuses um, in your success failure and loss rate. And also how long it takes to research. Um, so if you put a bunch of brains, this time will actually come down lower and lower and lower. But you can actually see the values for it there and uh, and probe them remotely. And, uh, okay, so let's look at this pink one. This is the proximity sensor. And uh, it says there's five players in range. And I think the range is about 20 blocks. Um the first one is an entity block, and all I can assume is it's uh, the crucible is is within range, or some some one of these blocks is in range and thinking it's an uh, a player. But anyway, the other player I've got a sheep, I've got a second sheep, I've got a cow, and I've got myself. So uh, you could easily use this proximity block or sensor to know when someone's come in a room maybe turn the lights on rather than using um things like uh, pressure plates or uh la the laser mod to detect when someone crosses a thing so i think that proximity sensor is going to be really useful i plan to use it in my let's play right away uh the last one here is railcraft i haven't used railcraft so unfortunately i can't test it. It's not in my mod, the mods that I use. Um, I've seen videos on it, so I know most of what these do. But uh, you can you can get information. And basically, I assume you know how much is in your your actual rail carts uh, that are in range and that kind of thing, and whether they're moving or stationary, something like that. So that's your various sensors. One that I did not show was the the orange one, and that is the uh, advanced power systems. I, I don't have that mod installed and for some reason I can't uh, put this one into a sensor. It won't let me. So I assume that's just because I don't have the mod installed. I'm not I'm not sure. But anyway. Okay, so that's, that's part one um, of how this mod works. The next part would be to uh, write a little bit of code and uh, I'll show you some some quick examples of the API that comes with this mod, um, but really it's going to be up to you guys to, to write the Lua code and, and find something uh, to make this useful. Uh, if you want to see this in a real world, app world application, please check my Let's Play. Uh, some of the later episodes that are coming out in the next week or two will show um, some of these, uh, mo uh, this mod particularly, um, probably the proximity one, uh, the world one, the chest one, um, and some of the others I'll add later. But I know I'm going to plan to use this mod, so that's why I wanted to get a tutorial out on it, and kind of a spotlight as well. Um, but yeah, let's dive into the a, couple, a few examples of the API. Be right back. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the code. Uh, I've done my standard setup here with a disk drive, and on reboot it will run my program. Um, if you go to the uh, mods folder where Computercraft Sensors is installed, you will find the uh, API under Sensors API, and it's 
pull us some good comments. It has most of these, but it's a little bit difficult to read. Um, so what I did is I extracted most of the main um, API calls, just, just a listing of them. And uh, so first you have the ability to get the controller, so you don't need to know what side the controller is on. You just call this function, it'll tell you which side. Um, then you pass whatever you get back to that to get the sensors, and that'll give you a list of sensors. Uh, once you have the sensor, you can get the information about it, and you can also change the range. Uh, note that this needs to be a string, not an integer. And also you can't go above the maximum defined in the config file, which is 10 by default. Uh, once you have your sensor in the, in the controller side as well, you can get the different probes that are available to you. And uh, then you can now, once you have the probes, get the targets um, that, that are listed. And remember when we were looking at the, the sensors, you know, you had like five targets listed for the proximity sensor. And uh, so that would just give you a list of all the targets in, uh, that are defined. And you can uh, set the default target that a sensor is using um, using that func uh, method call there. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can get a list of available readings. Uh, this call is bugged. Uh, it actually gets you a list of probes um, or targets. I can't remember which. Um, it does not return a list of the different readings. Um, so you can't really use that one. Uh, but if you do know the, the reading that you're looking for, um, you can set the active reading. Um, so, for instance, like if you want to know if it's uh, snowing, you can use the has snow reading and put that there. Um, and then once you have set the target and set the active reading, you should be able to just call get reading. And I assumed that would just return, you know, if I set the, uh, the active reading to has snow, it would just tell me if it has snow, true or false, it'd just be like a string or something. That's not the case, this actually returns an array of all the readings available. So unfortunately you can't just get the single reading, um, so that makes the set target and set active reading pretty much uh, unusable, or you know, worthless, you can just use a different method and stuff. Get reading 2 does the same thing, but you need to provide the probe and the target. And this is also bugged. Um, it actually wants the target first, the probe second. So if you pass the probe, then the target will not get anything returned. But if you pass it this way, it works. And that returns a list of readings as well. And there's actually one more that I didn't grab. It's at the bottom here. Let me just grab that real quick. Put that up here just for... And this is the what you'd really call to get all the sensors. Um, so you'd pass the side, the sensors on, the sensor, the target, and the probe. Okay, and if you don't want target, probe, and sensors all are, just give me a sec and I'll explain everything and how it works. Okay, so now uh, we'll move on to actually calling some of these methods and seeing them in action. Uh, the first thing you need to do is load the API. So these are not just normal calls that are part of a computer craft. This is a peripheral API that has to be a, an additional uh, mod. Um, so the way you do that is you always want to unload the API first just in case it's already been loaded. And if you try to load it when it's, there's already one loaded then it won't work and if you update the API that kind of thing. Um, so you always want to do unload API first and then load API. And the API for the sensors is in the ROM folder then APIs then it's called sensors. Uh, there's also two others, one called Sensors Data um, that helps you work with some of the mod sensor blocks like Industrial Craft, Build Craft, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's also a one called Sensors UI that kind of helps uh, make the, the user interface that's in that sample program that comes with the, with the mod. Um, so you really don't need those two, you can get everything you want just out of the Sensors API. Okay, and then I've also got a, a helper function, and all this does is take in a, a dictionary array and prints it out. It just runs through a loop. Um, so this I call a lot, so I just wanted to save myself some time and just make a function to print an array or a dictionary. Okay, so let's actually start using the API. The first thing's really simple. We're just going to um, get the side that the controller's on. And so I'm going to go ahead and uncomment that out and uh, come back to Minecraft. And if I reboot this machine, you should see that it prints out back. So it knows that our... Let me turn it day real quick. 
it knows that our controller is on the back. Um, if you have multiple controllers on one computer, it will only return the first one it finds. Uh, and you really only need one controller per computer anyway. Okay, so now we really don't have to know when we write a program what side the controller's on. So that's cool. Next thing is to get the sensors, the available sensors. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment that print function and save it. And let's see what happens when we run this. Okay, so it's got a list of these sensors connected to this controller. We have a proximity sensor and the My World sensor. And you see those are the names that we've given them. This is on the purple network. And uh, we called it proximity. This one is also on the purple network and we called it My World sensor. So whatever you name these is what will appear in the list. And uh, this mod works heavily on the string name of things. So if I went and renamed this to something else, it would probably break all my programs. So you kind of have to name your sensor first, then change your program, or if you rename your sensor, make sure you go back and change your program. Okay. So we know how to get the, the sensors that are on that frequency. Okay. You see, after that, I've gone ahead and uh, saved a reference to the proximity sensor and the world sensor. Um, the proximity was the first one, world was the second one. So that way I don't have to remember the name of them, I just can call them using this. Um, do be aware that if you add another sensor on this network, uh, it might throw off the, the order. So you might have to change those values again. Okay, the next one is to get information about the sensor. So now that I've got a reference to my world sensor, let's see what information I can get about it. Okay, so these are the various things that we have. We have the type of card that's on that sensor, um, the distance away, and that doesn't seem accurate to me because here's my configuration thing and it's one, two, three blocks away. So not entirely sure about that one uh, being accurate or not. Uh, the name I gave it gave it uh, what it's currently set to read. If I do the get re get reading, and then the world sensor always has a range of zero. Um, other ones are default to range ten. Okay. So if I wanted to, I could just say um, get a list of sensors, and then for each one, go through you know, iterate through in a loop and find which one was the world sensor and then save it rather than reference it by name. That's probably a better application. Okay. Uh, the next one is to change that range of the sensor. So if I print out what the current range is and let's set it to five and see what happens. You can see that the current range is 10 and it's now 5. If I try and set, the, and notice this is a string, if you just do that, it will not work. If I set it to 20, uh, it's still at 5. And why is that? It's because the uh, config file defines 10 as the maximum. So if you try and go higher than 10, it will just keep it at what it currently is. So you can go to the config file and change the maximum if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it at 10 right now and turn the print calls off. Okay, let's move on to the next one. The next one we start actually getting into uh, cool stuff. So uh, we're going to get the available probes for the world sensor and print them out. You see this stuff is pretty easy to work with. Oops, I don't think I saved it. Try again. Cool, so we have the world probe area and the biome, and if we go check that sensor, that's the same listing we get here, world area and biome, right? Okay. So I, uh, I'll save a reference to the biome probe, which was the third one in the list. I'm also going to get the probes available pro for the proximity sensor, and the second one is the player probe, so I'm going to store those. Okay. 
the next thing we want to do is uh, there's two calls to get the, the available targets and by targets I mean if you go into here and we go down to the players probe and see we have five targets listed and if I hit left or right I can scroll through the five targets right okay so if I want to get a li the each of those targets I can call uh, get available targets um, this one didn't seem to work I'm not entirely sure why it just uh, this one seems to be better um, you specify the probe and it might be that some of the sensors like the proximity and the world sensor just don't have generic targets um, so that you have to pro provide a probe value to get the targets um, but let's go ahead and print those out and comment this guy again and you can see the various targets that I have for the proximity sensor Okay, I did say, I just want to check. Okay, so remember we had five targets on that proximity sensor, and a lot of these are, you know, what's CU, what's UN, VQ. VQ is the player, CU are my sheep, and EN is my cow, and entity block, I don't know. I guess I could find out based on that value there. I think that's the X and Z coordinates. Um, but yeah, so here's the player one, and that's the one I'm interested in, and that's ID 5. So you can see I can save that as my player target. And then I also get the um, available targets for the, uh, one sec. Oh, I set the target, uh, the default target for this sensor right here. So I want to set it to the player target. Uh, and then I also get the, the available targets for the world sensor and set the uh, B target, which is like the biome target. And there's only one target for the world sensor ever, so you really don't need that, but that's fine. Okay, so here's the bugged call, and that's the get available readings. Um, make sure I turn all of this off. And you can see, I'd expect to see for pro proximity sensor something like this name type health max health distance and id let's see what we really see uh that's a list of our probes okay so you can see that's bugged um so don't use this um if i do know the name of a reading um so i've just gone to that world probe and looked up one of the act, uh, one of the reading values. So there's a biome probe. I have biome name, right? Okay. So now that I know that, I can just set set the active reading to biome name. And then what I'd hope to do is just say sensors get reading, and it should know my target based on what I've set here and my um, active reading uh, or my uh, yeah, the active reading is biome name, and ignore that I've changed that, that's just code I've changed, but if I set the target correctly and the active reading, I'd expect just to get the string back, and you can see, that I get a table, I'm like, what, I don't want a table, I just want the value, and... Let's go back with there, and you can see that this table is actually a list of all the readings, not just biome name. So, you can also see that I have set the target to proximity, you know. So, yeah. Anyway, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird. I I wouldn't use this one. Okay, so let me show you what you should use. Um, and this is the one I told you was bugged, right? If you pass the probe, then the target. We get nothing, and the program actually crashes and doesn't even tell you that it had an error. Big, that's bad. Uh, 
instead if you pass the target and then the probe. Oops, maybe not. I know I fixed it at one point. Give me one sec, I'll try to fix it. Okay, I wasn't able to figure out how to make that one work, so let's just assume that that one is bugged as well, no matter which direction you put them in. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so here is what you do need to use, right? <laughs> and that's get sensor reading as a dictionary. You pass the, the side that your controller's on, the sensor, the target, and the probe. And that'll store it in a di data dictionary, and then you can print that out. Okay, and that's the same information we got before. Um, if I just want a single value, I can just code it like this. Uh, data dot and then any of the values. So I could get the biome name and let's go get as snow as well. Case sensitive. And that should print out planes and faults. So, using this method here, we just need to get the side the controller's on, get the available sensors and pick one of them. For that sensor, get the, uh, the list of targets and pick the one we're interested in. And for that target, get the list of probes and pick the one that we want to probe. At that point, we can get all the uh, sensor readings and then access them just with a dot notation. Pretty easy. Um, so let's see that in a real-world application. Be right back. All right, I'm back. And I don't know if about you, but uh, I really dislike when creepers and other mobs are attacking me in the middle of the night. And uh, so I'd like to, you know, deter them from doing that. So let's just uh, hang out in my little uh, bunker here until nighttime and see what happens using the CC sensors mod. Whoa! Lights came on. Sweet. No creepers going to spawn in this room. What about out here? Oh, we got a perimeter. This is using the lasers mod. And I've got some lights here to prevent mobs from spawning. And if they do spawn and they try and walk through my game, oh, they're going to be... I'm on peaceful, so I didn't die, but creeper would have been dead. And let's show you how to do this real quick. Jump, please. There we go. Okay, so I've got a uh, a world sensor here. I've got uh, my controller running on frequency three or blue. Um, my computer is running here a program that periodically checks if uh, the world sensor has reported. Uh, I think it's in the world probe, no, area probe, uh, if it's daytime or if it's raining, uh, or if it's night, if it's not daytime or if it is raining. Then it sends a signal out the back of the computer, which is turning on all my lights and also sending a wireless transmitter to turn on all those. So that's just a quick, simple use of this mod. Um, there's plenty of applications for it, but most of them go into other mods that I use. And since I want to just keep this a straight computer craft tutorial, I'm not going to go into the Buildcraft Forestry and everything like that. If you want to see that, you got to come to my Let's Play where I'll start using these sensors and uh, they'll help me computerize my world. This has been Funshine X computer, uh, computer Craft Tutorial on the peripheral CC sensors. Hope you guys can use them in your world and hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Catch you later. Bye.